Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be going over a gin game that I played on stream and it was extremely rough. It was a terrible, terrible early game. I start out 0-3. It's not the typical game that you would see uploaded to YouTube, but the main point of it is going to be how to win, how to get carried essentially, and that is how to play weak side successfully. And I'm going to do my best to explain my decision making during this entire early game where I get completely blasted and pretty much how, yeah, how to get carried as an AD carry. A lot of players with their ego get in the way of their own wins and they feel the need to carry every single game that they play. But let me tell you right now, that is not necessary whatsoever. You are going to be statistically on the weak side of the map 50% of the time. What that means, what that means is that the jungler could only be in one spot at once. Mid is central to everything. So, you know, mid could just play towards either the top or the bot side of river, you know, and that's, that's where the map is split as a whole. So the jungler is always gonna be playing to one side lane plus mid. And some, sometimes mid, doesn't get as much help as it needs and, and the jungler spends a lot of time in the side lane instead so mid doesn't actually get to participate much but generally mid has to be included in whatever side lane the jungler is playing to. In this game in particular I don't get any help because my lane matchup is so terrible we're playing Jin set into into Ash Karma. I, I don't know what I was thinking when I picked Jin. it was really rough and the early game we spent a lot of time literally just sitting under our tower and not even being able to farm so Maybe this will be interesting for you guys to watch and see like what the mentality is. So here I figure I just don't want them to have the opportunity of diving me and I don't want them to be able to like stack a huge wave into my tower. So I'm like sort of killing the first wave a little bit. I know that I'm not going to be able to push in an Ash and a Karma, but I'm okay with like sort of leaving the wave in the middle here and just slowing down their push a little bit. This might have been a mistake on my part and it might have been better just to completely leave the wave alone so that it pushes into me faster. But as you can see, as you will see, I actually don't end up losing that much experience as a result of what I did. And I feel like it wasn't that terrible considering how difficult this lane matchup is. So yeah, we end up literally just spectating the game for a solid 30 seconds. But you gotta do what you can, you know? You can't you can't go back and champ select and repick your lane, repick your champions. You you have to you have to make the most out of the situation that you're in. And for us here, it just means taking as little damage as possible, collecting as much experience as we can, and CSing is out of the question, you know? The thought process here is eventually well okay, the jungler hasn't even invested anything here, so at this at this point in time, we're just suffering due to our bad lane matchup. But I do think eventually it would be sort of rewarding because, you know, one flash onto onto Ash is set and we could probably get a kill with a jungle gank as long as we're healthy. A lot of people make this mistake where they don't prioritize their HP enough. And even here, I got hit by that Mantra Karma Q earlier. That might have been bad. But a lot of people, when they're in this hard, difficult lane, they greed so much for the experience and for the last hits on the minions. As a result, they get chunked and they have to reset which actually means they're going to lose even more minions in the long run. So it's important to prioritize your health as an objective over everything when you're in these situations. And if you do that, then like, yeah, you're going to be however much CS down, but at least you'll be on the map still. So yeah, like you can see, I, I get three a wave late, but it's not that big of a deal. Like I missed probably a couple melees. I, I guess I missed three melees of XP if that's what it took to get three there. But I was three for the gank. So anyways, this is what happens when your jungler tries to gank the weak side. This is what can happen, okay? So the top matchup is Silas and the Nautilus. Silas is going to naturally win that, no problem. And I think the mid matchup is like Assassin versus Assassin, you know? It's very 50-50. And Karthus actually, I know the map is covered, so you couldn't see, but Karthus came all the way through their jungle in a very aggressive and high commitment gank in a situation where we are getting shit on and you know they have full control they have full words they have full knowledge and so what happens well i'll show you guys it's a miserable situation a lot of players want to just rage quit after this happens 
we uh you know we, we pick up one no we don't pick up even a single kill my bad we get five man this is actually a five man at four minutes into the game this is like what they talk about when they say bot lane is shit it's this game right here so my reward for playing safe my, my reward for playing as well as i possibly could have early game and in, in at least in the sense that I'm not dying and I'm not making myself killable or gankable by the jungler in that sense. So I may I might be down 15 CS at four minutes, which is terrible. But I've made sure that I'm not going to be the reason my team loses so far. Okay. And you know I'm losing another wave under my tower. I'm not even getting experience on the cannon wave here. I'm going to be down an entire level, if not more, for the rest of the game. And there's no <laughs> you know the. I don't even get the cannon. The tower even executes the cannon, so I can't W it. And uh, I'm just, I'm making sure I'm in a situation where I can't get dove. But I do end up making a mistake here, and I get a little bit greedy, and I get punished for it. And I'll show you guys, it could potentially ruin the game, because I got a tiny bit greedy on weak side. You can see how defensively I've been playing, but just one small misstep where I'm like, okay, they probably backed now. I, uh, I greed. So what I should have done here, what, what's really important when you're in a weak side situation like this, where what's going to happen is the wave will catch on my minions, and then it's going to it's gonna stack on my side right up there, and then it'll create a slow push into them, where we have no sums, and we're weak side, it's really bad. So I needed to kill, I, let me go, go back if I can real quick here. I needed to make sure, basically, that both of these minions were dead before this wave hits the tower so it would have literally been better to miss the c miss the second cs just cue the first one burst that and then reset instantly because what ends up happening to me is i, I get punished super hard and uh at this point by the way you know the nautilus their top laner tp'd uh to my lane and my silas tp'd to his lane so that means my top which was already going to be our strong side lane, is now like even stronger. You know, he's got a huge advantage out of that. Nautilus came, he didn't get any of the kills, he did get assists, which is nice. But like we can see on the scoreboard here, Silas is now level 5, 7 CS up, and he has a fresh back, and Nautilus is only level 4, and the wave is even. So he's down a level, I'm also down a level, you know? That's, that's, that's what you need to constantly look at. So a lot of people at this point in the game will, will get demoralized because they're comparing... You, they're, they're, you compare yourself to the other AD carry, which is Ash, who's 2-0-1, oh, and, and she's up like 20 CS on me at this point, right? But that's not what you need to do. You need to, when you're weak side, you need to compare yourself to the other weak side player, which is the Nautilus top, who is now going to get shit on by Silas, hopefully. If he's bad, you know, maybe there's no punishment in the end for me. Maybe I lose this game, and I never had a chance, but I can increase my chances of winning this game tenfold by just making sure... I don't overfeed anyone on their team, okay? And there you go, you know, Silas gets a solo kill, which I don't even, I'm not even asking for a solo kill. I'm just asking for Silas to now dominate this lane and get a CS advantage and, and you know, get pressure and get maybe a, a potential roam off or something. You know, I'm not asking for him to solo kill. Maybe you're, maybe you're strong sizing a solo kill, but the expectation is for, for them to do well after, you know, the enemy re, uh, commits resources into your lane, so... You can see, I don't get to do much. Real quick, wave control. As I said, this is what I didn't want to happen. The wave, I come back to lane and the wave is pushing out into them. And I have no sums and I don't know where their jungler is. And I, it's it's going to be difficult for me to actually get this wave in their tower and then just leave it there. You know, get all the way in. They can easily grab it and freeze it in front of their tower. So what I do want to do is I want to slow push it. And this is really important when you're playing weak side, okay? So you get this huge wave. And this is what happens when you're in a losing lane state, guys. Because a winning lane will always push the other person in at a perfect timing where the minions bunch up on the tower and then slow push back into them so that the strong side never has to worry about that, that farm getting taken away or denied from them. Like It's very difficult. If you're the strong side, think about this, right? Normally... A big wave you can punish by diving, but if you're the strong side, you're never going to get dove. It's just not going to happen, right? So they don't have to worry about that. So how I can use that to my advantage, though, is I can try to use this giant minion wave as like a third champion. And look, my Karthus is going to path top, right? Because he's going to go path to my strong side. So I have to pretty much 2v3 this situation successfully. And anything I get is a win here, okay? So 
if in the process of me getting this wave into their tower, I make their jungler show up and, and, and you know, show me that he's not going to let the wave crash, that's fine because then I see their jungler. So literally anything I can get at this point is a win. If I see their support, I know the support's not roaming to my strong side. If I see the jungler, I know the jungler is playing to my side. You know, like it's a it's a win even if it means I'm going to get denied even further because it signals my team to be able to play even more aggressively on the other side of the map. And you know, a lot of people, a lot of people will play really well all day and then they'll look back and they'll be like all of the games that I was supposed to win I, I I didn't I, I like the one game the one game I was supposed to win and my teammates actually played well I was the one feeding I lost the game and that's that's because you know a lot of the time if you're getting fed it just means that you're strong side you know it's very easy to play when the jungler is ganking for you when your top laner TPs your lane it is the easiest situation to be a winning laner you don't have to worry about shit okay but when you're weak side it it is very difficult. You know, your opponents will do all kinds of disrespectful shit to you. They'll tell, they'll take bad trades. They'll, they'll, you know, you could get, if you're a top laner, that means like you're getting proxy behind your turret, but being the weak side is showing enough restraint to not try to punish punishable mistakes. And if you do go for a punish, it has to be very, 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 very calculated because it has to be a punish where if it doesn't work out, you don't even you don't lose much. It's not game losing for your for your strong side of the map. Okay, if that makes any sense for you guys. <clears throat> so here, look, the wave is frozen. I'm miserable. I actually think I end up dying here again. So if anything, honestly, this is kind of this is like a bad example. This is like this is like what not to do when you're weak side because I just got greedy as hell here for no reason. You know, I thought I thought maybe Karma would roam mid. I wasted my W on a on a minion that wasn't the cannon, and then I got greedy, I got insanely greedy. I'm showing I'm showing here too, I'm showing them overextended, and of course I all I want is XP on the cannon because I was about to hit level five, and I I thought okay that this is important to me. I want to hit level five. Boom! I'm instantly fucking dead. I'm throwing the game for my team. Ash is getting fed off my mistakes. Okay, like it's terrible. You, when you're weak side, don't do that. Just Watch the wave die. It's not a big deal. Just let it go. You're going to be a weak ass little bitch for the rest of the game. That's fine, dude. That's fine. It's just not your job to carry this game. I have 30 CS at eight minutes. I'm miserable. Okay. That's just, it could just happen sometimes. And it happens to pros too. It happens to all kinds of players. You know, like it's, you're not going to see it in most YouTube videos. No one's going to upload this shit because it's miserable and I'm getting shit on. But like, it's important. It's, it's very important. And it's even more important to go over these games and see what you could have done better and how you could have optimized your play in these games. Because as I said, when you're the one getting fed, yes, the burden of carrying the game on you, it, the burden of carrying the game is on you, but that's that's what everyone wants. That's the fun part of the game. When you get to be the juiced up carry and you just 1v9, like, and then if you lose because well, you didn't carry your weak side hard enough. You can blame them, you know? It's it's crazy the amount of players I see that, like, call for jungle ganks constantly. They're like, jungler, jungler, come to my lane. I need ganks. And then their top side gets shit on, and they have no idea why, and they just cry. They're like, oh, my solos are so bad. Your solos are bad because you took all of the jungle attention away, and you didn't properly carry the game. So it's it's important. It's a pet peeve of mine to see. It's tilting. So this this is good. This this wave state is excellent. It's pushing into me. I'm now I'm I'm fully aware of just how non greedy I need to be, and I'm I'm really behind at this point. Okay, and Ash is pretty ahead. I feel like if I can get anything, if I if I can like burn some sums or like, you know, if I if I can fuck with them a little, it would make my day. You know, because as as i said as the weak side you can still make plays they just have to be very calculated and you you have to play them very precisely okay so i'm i'm thinking in my head like what can i do and you know if i play if i play a situation perfectly with carthasol there's a chance that i i burn ash's sums or i trade kills on her which would be amazing um and so yeah i, I do end up going for a play you'll see really quick here but what's what is important here is that like i get this wave into the tower and it was a calculated play because I have these three extra caster minions and I have the first clear on their wave. I believe I kill almost all of their minions before Ash goes on me. And so now look, I have all of these caster minions to fight with. 
And honestly, looking looking back at this, if I maybe played this slightly better, maybe maybe I would have won. And, and look how close this was. Like this was very calculated on my part. It's a calculated weak side decision. If I can give Karthus a kill in a one for one, and I can like semi fix this wave, it is huge for my team. That is like the biggest play I could make all game up to this point, right? So, yes, it didn't work out, but some that that's just how it is sometimes, you know. In general, as, aside from uh, my first two deaths, like I'm, I'm playing this fellow fa fairly reserved, relatively reserved, and I'm I'm just trying to make sure that I'm like full HP and able to to help my team in case any fights happen around me. So I'm never gonna like leave my lane. I'm never gonna leave my post. Some people get so frustrated and so angry. They'll like just start roaming, like just go top or go mid and be like, fuck it. Like I can't get any farm. I'll just farm your lane type shit or farm the jungle. People get mad when they're playing weak side, man. People get really, really mad. And it's especially understandable when your top side is getting shit on. But if your top side is getting shit on your weak side, that just means you're gonna lose the game anyways. You know, that's that. Like it is what it is. But when your team has the potential to carry you, you just, you know, it's like you just show up. You keep showing up to your day job as the fucking whatever, you know? You're, you're the fucking, you're not the janitor. You're not the garbage man. You're you're like the sewer diver. You dive through the fucking sewers of bot lane, unclogging the sewers. You know, it's like, it's the worst job. Nobody wants to do it, but you, you could do it. And if you do it well, you'll get rewarded. So I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to stack this call at this point. I'm trying to get as much farm for free as I can get. Um, if I'm overextended at this point, it's because I, I knew Karma wasn't here. Uh, obviously, the map is covered, so you guys can't see it. I miss cannon. I'm fucking bad. But, but yeah, I start playing a little bit safer. And what's going to happen is you're going to see that, like, I believe a play happens around bot. I mean, no, maybe that, maybe that play that just happened was the play. Well, anyways, eventually, with Harold being up, the fight moves to top lane mainly. Uh, these two fuckers start roaming, naturally. And I just stay bot, and I end up getting a free tower. And like, uh, it's, a, it's, a weird, it's a weird balancing act when you're weak side, because if you think about it, right, the, the, the fastest way for you to get back in the game is to take part in fights where your teammates are fed, and then skillfully last hit the kill. And all of that time spent as weak side becomes irrelevant. I know a lot of you guys will have experienced this. It's really frustrating when the person that you're completely shitting on pulls up to a completely unrelated team fight to your lane. You're not a part of it. They get a shutdown. All of a sudden, they have the same items as you. And you've been destroying them all game. It could happen. That's how you need to play. But at the same time, you also want to take opportunities to like farm safely alone like and not over roam when you're looking for these situations okay this this is the thing that this is the thing i was talking about you know my my team five man's bot it was my opportunity to get some kp i get it i get i got an assist on volley bear i get the wave in for free i believe i i get like a plate or something as well maybe or even just a free back cycle that's that's fine oh we get that we get their tp okay so like you know as as fucked as i am this game i'm still able to participate in, in the skirmishes around my lane because I haven't given up. That's all it took. I just didn't give up. Here, I, I could have taken this kill, but I give it to Karthus. I'm generous. I know that Karthus, Karthus's chance of carrying the game compared to me is so much higher. You know, he's my strong side. I want to keep juicing him up in this case because he's a carry. But if it was like a tank jungler or something, you know, if it was a tank jungler that wasn't visiting my game all lane, if it was like a Sejuani or something, yeah, I would take the kill. Okay. I would, I would use my tanks, uh, fedness or whatever you want to call it to to juice myself up so and i'm i'm thankful again my, my tops i was actually pretty competent this game which doesn't always happen it's not always going to happen to you but even if they're not like giga smurfing even if they're just going even and they're they're like slightly winning their matchups that's that's fine you know like it, it it's it's still winnable. It's winnable until you give up, basically. So, which I'm not perfect. Sometimes, sometimes I give up too. Honestly, it's this. I was especially resilient at this game, and here I learned. I learned from my mistake, right? Like, I I knew just I by this point in the game I knew just how cheesy the karma and the ash were. I knew how desperate they were to kill me because their soul lanes were getting shit on. 
So I even at this point, I wanted to push that wave so bad because I wanted I wanted to get my IE. I would have gotten it off the cannon plus the next one. But I didn't. I didn't greed. I assumed that they're just cheesing me in this brush. I made sure not to be a burden to my team. I let it go. I, re I got the fresh reset off. And, you know, the strong side is always going to feel this sense of desperation to impact the rest of the game because you, you can be the most fed AD carry in the world. If you don't impact the rest of the map in time, your team will have fed the other team so much that it, your kills become irrelevant. That's what happens. It doesn't matter if you're an AD carry or a top laner. Silas and Zed and, and Karthus, they were feeling the same way, right? They saw me. If they continued to let me get shit on, completely like the game might be a lot harder in the long run so they five man do they they five man bought as well you know they they paid me back what they're doing is they're they're patting me on the shoulder they're paying me back they're like thank you thank you for your hard work cleaning the fucking sewers down here this is your reward it wasn't much look my reward was three assists but it was something so anyways my point is the strong side has has to eventually move they get my tower and then i'm free i'm free you know i'm not getting punished harder because they, they gotta leave I finally get to spend some time getting solo XP and free farm. And I end up getting this entire tower. And this is what I was talking about when it's like, you know, finding those opportunities to farm on your own safely or, or freeze as, as LS like always recommends. I think freezing in this situation is also very good. Or grouping with your team so that you can try to last hit kills or get assists. And especially in a situation like this, where you see your strong side losing a fight because the 5-0 Ash is participating with the Karma. You know, it doesn't feel good. And it makes you think in your head, should I have roamed? Was it gr is it greedy for me to be sitting down here killing the tower right now? The answer is no. You want to go for whatever is consistent for you, okay? You still matter, especially if, if you're an AD carry watching this. Like, you are still extremely important. If you, if you start giving up all your farm, you get super behind in XP, super behind in farm... The game is over no matter how... The, the game can be over no matter how fed your teammates are. Like, having a decently strong AD carry is very, very important. Whether it's for doing dragon, baron, killing towers, whatever, like... Or, or breaking breaking through people that have, like, a shit ton of MR. Or or even armor, you know? Like, you're you're the only, you're one of the only classes in the game that can that can just, like, buy a last whisper and tank bust, you know? So, it's... your Your health... Your health is important to the game state no matter what. So... Be self, be a little bit selfish, you know, look, no, be super selfish, honestly, look for those opportunities to get kills from your teammates, but also look for those opportunities, just be alone and, and spend some time, you know, read a book, do what's good for you, get a massage, make yourself a nice meal or a cup of coffee, whatever you got to do. Do it. Your team will thank you. Okay, guys, and this is this this is the final form of the weak side player. Okay, when you finally get to go mid, and all of a sudden you're like somewhat relevant because losing the push in mid, the lane is so much shorter than side lanes, so it's not that big of a deal. They get you know they get wave prio. Doesn't really matter. You know, teammates can easily rotate to you and protect you from getting dove. Um, they need to have vision on two sides to, to make any proactive plays on you. So, like, it's very difficult to make plays on the mid laner. I'm sure you guys all know this. And for AD carries, finally getting to go mid is, like, the best feeling on the planet. You just feel so safe, warm, and cozy. It's like you're wrapped up in, in a blanket and your mid and your jungler are the blanket. And you're just, you're just like, chilling in the middle, like, a, like, the, like the stuffing, like the inside of a burrito. And yeah, I don't have to do shit. I'm lucky. Again, guys, I'm lucky this game. My team is doing great. But no matter what, this is the way to play. And if you look at my items, you'll see in a couple minutes, even now, I'm I'm like 1.5 core on my items, and Ash has two core. She has Bork and Runans. I have only IE and Zeal. I am behind a little bit, but I'm only 50 CS down in regards to the game state. I bought a call, which is the equivalent of like 20 CS, so I'm actually a little closer. And yeah, I'm actually I actually do some damage. I'm safely following up on whatever team whatever plays my team makes. 
uh, farming is his gold. That's their weak side player right there, by the way. You look at me flexing with my IE and my zeal, doing my thing. I've, I've only died three times, and their weak side has died five times, and he's inting the game away, okay? That is my direct comparison. Don't compare yourself to the laner that, that is getting all the attention early. Like, not that it makes them... I'm not saying they're worse or, or better because they got jungle ganks, you know? I'm not mad that they got jungle ganks, but that's just how the game goes, okay? Like, often... Like, sometimes your jungler will match their jungler and bot lane will become a 3v3, okay? And, you know, you won't just give up one side of the map. But often, oftentimes... And, and uh, this is especially in solo queue too, because people, people, the, the concept of strong side and weak side is really lost on people in solo queue. They, they, they fail to understand it a lot of the time. But yeah, some, sometimes you know the, the, the lane state will be more even. But in this case, yeah, like after having this many resources invested into bot lane, Ash is five and zero, oh, and you look at my solo laners, they're smurfing too. That's, that's where the parallels are drawn. So. Da -de da we're chilling, we're chilling, and look how safe I'm playing too, right? Like again, I'm I'm playing super safe mid because if you die mid, and you're you're uh, whoever is strong on your team is doing their thing. Like as you can see, Silas is like hard pushing. He's he's about to get an inhib. If you if you're the one holding mid, which is the easiest thing ever and the safest thing ever, and you die just because you're an idiot, you ruin the entire game. And again, man. Don't make excuses for yourself. Play weak side optimally. Invest time into into perfecting your ability to play weak side because I can't like there's so many players that will just die here as the as the mid holder and then they'll cry. They'll be like blah blah blah. I got no jungle attention. I could have carried this game, but my team sucks. You know, don't don't let that be you. All right, do not let that be you. And 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 look how look how carefully I play these fights. Okay, I'm playing very cautiously. I do not want to die. I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm already so behind. I want to make sure I'm here in case the fight goes south. I don't have to invest everything, you know? I don't want to have to use flash, heal, and still die and lose an objective because the game can turn on its head just like that, okay? So I'm, I'm very, very careful about my contribution to fights. If you're strong, you know, you should probably still be a little bit careful if you're playing AD, but you know, you could... You can commit more, you know, you know you're strong. But me, if my team fucks up here and one of my strong side players dies, I wanna be I wanna be this the stability in my team. I wanna be there to mop up the rest of the mid farm. I wanna be there to maybe potentially stop a baron. You know, I don't I don't wanna just commit. I don't wanna roll the dice. I don't wanna gamble my entire life and this entire game on uh, my teammates making a play. Because Again, well, people people in general, it's not bad to trust yourself more than you trust your teammates, right? And as I said, Using using their fedness to leverage myself into a fed position is my ultimate goal. I do want to do that, so that's that's what I have in mind. It's really important to assume it. You know, it's as bad as it is. Assume your teammates will throw. You know, these guys are doing great this game, but assume they're just gonna make the worst play ever and just decide they don't give a fuck about the game. Like a pizza is about to arrive at their door and they gotta spend five minutes grabbing it. Like that's been me at some points, honestly. And it could be you. It it could be happening to you too. You know, like it, you you never really know. So, and th this fight is is a good example. You know, like it looks so great, but look look how fast this could have been a lost game. We could have lost right here. If I die, it it could be terrible. Like I die here. Um, I don't think Zed can kill Volley Bear. Silas is bottom. They could get Baron, and then the game would just be fucking turned on its head. But because I play this fight so defensively, and I'm just such a pussy, really, it, it works out. It works out. And we get bought in him for free. Zed is split pushing. I end up, well, sorry, boy, boy. I had to do it to you. And that's the that's the desperation. You know, he's desperate. He's 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 desperate to make a play on me. I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the weak side again. I keep saying weak side, but like it's true. I'm I'm everyone's like prey in this game. I'm the rabbit, he's the bear. For me, for me to get a kill like that as as weak side is significant. It's it's very huge. It's very huge for that play to happen. And this game could be th with a, with an Ash this fed, this game could be thrown at any point. She's literally got eight kills, guys. 
but by just ensuring that you don't do anything stupid, you make sure the game goes nice and smooth. It's 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 really key, honestly. So yeah, there's there's a little bit of downtime, but now the game, I don't know how much longer this goes on for. The main points have been covered, but you can see I, I'm gonna end this game with a decent score line. We, you know, we got bot in him. I believe, I believe we're gonna get Baron. Uh, actually, it it goes on for a while. You know, this. I'm not gonna lie. If I recall correctly, it gets very sloppy. So we're gonna skip a little bit of it. Oh no, that this game was clean actually. My bad. Well, either way, it was all boring. You know, we get bot in him. I think we get Cloud Soul too. Maybe. No, I don't have Cloud Soul. Well, we secure we secure most of the dragons. We get we get all the inhibs. You know, we we end the game clean. Twenty seven minutes, not bad. And I'm, there I am, desperately beating on the nexus because I want to beat out of the game. So I hope this was useful for you guys. I don't see really, and I I would like to make a video elaborating on this even more, but I really don't see many people talking about like weak side strong side and weak side strong side is sort of it's sort of become like a buzzword but it is real and you need to really understand what it means to be either side on either side of those coins you know you you need to whatever role you're given in game you need to play that role well and you can you can play it intelligently you can play it with finesse you don't you don't have to just like bend over you know you can you can uh, add your own little flair even even to to being weak side so yeah, I know I probably said weak side literally a thousand times in this video. I'd love I'd love to count. But again, yeah, hopefully it was really enjoyable for you guys. Hopefully it was informative for you guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to apply it to your games in the future. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate the support. And if you could comment, like, or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And I'll be making more of these in the future. So thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Peace out. See you later.